only got two years as mayor. Okay. So writing a linear equation from a graph. And here's a real world example. I have a calf who weighs 90, 190 pounds when it is 30 days old. Can you imagine weighing 190 pounds when you're 30 days old? It's just crazy. And 235 pounds when it's 45 days old. 15 days. It's gained a lot of weight. Okay? We're supposed to find an equation of a line that estimates its growth. Thirty minus forty-five. Where's that going? The X's are the Y's. Be careful. So when we look at an ordered pair, is it X Y or Y X? X Y, right? So which one's going to go on top? If our slope is the change in Y over the change in X, which one's going to go on top? Yep, 190 and 235, okay? So if we start with the 190 and we take away 235, then we gotta start with the 30 and take away the 45, okay? Had I gone the opposite way and said, I wanna know how much he is when he was older, I'd start with the 235 minus the 90 and then the 45 minus the 30. Doesn't matter as long as you, whatever point you start with is the one that you go back to for your axis. So what is 190 minus 35? Negative 45, very good. What is 30 minus 45? Negative 15. So both are negatives, right? So we can reduce it, it'll be, it'll be positive, and 45 divided by 15 is 3. So this little cap down here is growing at a rate of what? 3, 3 pounds every day. Can you imagine gaining 3 pounds a day? That's a lot of turkey at Thanksgiving. We could probably do it at Thanksgiving, but most likely not for the rest of the year, hopefully. Okay. So that's almost there. That's our slope. So how do we find the rest of the equation? some equations there. We had standard form, we had point slope form, and we had slope y intercept form. Okay. Which one do you want to work with? Slope y intercept form. Nicely this is graphed for us, right? We didn't weren't just given points. I also gave you a graph to show you how it looks. So can you look at that graph and decide what the y intercept is? Like one, what? Which of those numbers in there is going to be the y intercept? 100. Why is it 100? It cuts through the y axis at 100. That's our y intercept. That's our b. Pretty good with that? So we have an equation that says y equals our slope, 3 pounds per day, times x plus our b, which is 100. What do you think that 100 actually represents? Is that cap? The pounds when? It was born, yeah. It was a 100, 100 pound cap when it was born. Imagine having a 100 pound baby. <laughs> that would be crazy. Okay? So it was 100 pounds when it was born, 
and is growing at a rate of three pounds every day. And he's doing it because his mom abandoned him. The mom had twins and the mom abandoned him. So my dad had to give it bottles of milk replacer every day and called him little guy. And every time he'd go out there, he'd shake the bottle and say little guy and the little guy would come, come to the barn to get fed. So that's my son actually feeding that calf. Now he, when they're abandoned and orphaned, they don't grow as fast as, as the other cows do to have the mom that actually decides to take care of both their twins instead of just one. All right, so that's an equation of a line. Here's another one. On a recent run, my app estimated that I burned 521 calories. That's a lot of calories. At this rate, how long would it take me to work off a 180-calorie bowl of oatmeal that I had for breakfast? How far did I run? 4.22 miles. Told me how many steps I took, right? And it told me how long I ran. 40, almost 41 minutes. Okay. And my average pace and so forth. So 521 calories in 40 point, 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 point 0.75 minutes. 47 minutes, about three fourths of a minute. Okay, so I've got an ordered pair here, right? Or a 520 calories, kilocalories, that's why I'm trying to do a K. We'll just say calories. And in 40.75 minutes. Can we think of what we can do with those two numbers to find something that resembles slope? Well, we found a weight per time before, right? How much was he growing over how many days? So does it make sense that we might take the 521 calories and divide it by the number of minutes that we ran? Okay, someone do that on your calculator for me. Five hundred twenty-one divided by forty point seven five. What was it again? I'm sorry. Twelve point seven nine. So twelve, almost thirteen calories every minute that I was on that trail. Okay. So now I had a 180 calorie bowl of oatmeal, right? So 180 calories, what do I have to do with that in order to figure out how long I have to run in order to make that work or to get rid of it? It's not gonna take the whole time, right? It's not gonna take 40 minutes to, to burn off 180 calories. Divide, right? Divide by the 12.79. Calories divided by calories per minute should get me minutes. So how many minutes is it? 14 minutes. To burn off 180 calorie bowl of oatmeal. Okay. How can I write that in slope form or something of that nature? Well, in 40 minutes, I burned 512.21 calories. So I'm looking for the number of minutes when I 
wanting and wanting to burn off 180 calories. Cross multiply. Yeah. Okay. Everybody cool? These are real world kinds of things that you can use such slope and intercept for to hopefully make things make sense. Now, we're not going to have time for this one, I don't believe. I didn't bring um, iPads or laptops in here. But if you have a phone, there's an app called Desmos. We talked about it yesterday, right? Okay. If you have a phone, you can use Desmos to approximate a line of best fit. And actually, I'll have one with iPads um, tomorrow. So we may actually we'll do that as, a, as an activity. So this guy. An estimated average number of caloric sweeteners each person in the U.S. eats on a yearly basis is given by this table. And we want to find the line of best fit for the data and use a graphing calculator to find that line of best fit. So think of this. Average person in, in 18, 19, 1850 ate about, 1950, ate about 109.6 pounds of added sweeteners. That's not the, the sugar that's already in your fruit or already comes from the starches in your foods. This is added sweeteners. And in 1960, it was 114 pounds. In 1980, 70, 123 pounds, 1980, 126 pounds, 1990, 145 pounds, 2,000, 152 pounds of sweeteners. And I'm seeing some of you drink a soda right now, and that's the added sweeteners we're talking about. Okay? There's more kinds of sweeteners now, too. Right. And the, the crazy thing is everybody wants to blame it on um, high fructose corn syrup. And it's not always just that. You guys see this in the time that, while you're wrapping up. This is the data that scares me. So here is a granola bar. Everybody have a granola bar every once in a while? If you look at the number of sugars on that, every time you see four grams of sugar, that's one teaspoon. So this granola bar has two teaspoons of added sugar to it, or has two teaspoons of sugar that your body's going to use. Yogurt. I turned the label so Yoplait wouldn't get mad at me. This is a Yoplait yogurt. And granted, some of this is coming from the lactose in the in the milk itself. But how many teaspoons of sugar are we talking here? Six and a little bit less, because it wasn't six and a half teaspoons of sugar. Imagine just eating six and a half teaspoons of sugar for breakfast. But that's what you're doing when you eat sweetened yogurt. Candy bar. Better or worse for you from sugar consumption? Better than yogurt, isn't that crazy? But a lot of that was coming from from the lactose, which is it also has calcium and things like that. So don't just say I'm going to eat a candy bar instead of yogurt. Here's what's a whopping scary one: Mountain Dew throwback has pure sugar, right? I have no way to represent the corn syrup that would be in a regular Mountain Dew, high fructose corn syrup. 44 grams of sugar, 11 teaspoons of sugar that they put in your can that you're drinking for breakfast. Absolutely crazy. So that's what we're talking about when we're talking about the added, the growth of sugar consumption in the U.S. Take a peek in your pantry. It'll scare you. Whatever, whatever you see for carbohydrates, divide that by four to see how many teaspoons of sugar is in that particular product. Pop tarts, sweet things, things that you think might be healthy for you. Some of it has fiber and that helps break it down. 
and, and not giving you all that energy from just pure sugar. There's a lot of added, a lot of added sugar in our foods. Okay, so that's where I'm going with this. We could do a whole unit in algebra two just on sugar consumption. Here's your high fructose corn syrup. Didn't exist in the 1950s. And here it is in the 2000 time frame. Right? Um, Wally? Yeah. Um, no, I just mm -hmm. have a little bit of robot that's on the planet yeah. all by itself, I think. Yeah. Have you like seen like anything from it? Just a yeah. very snippet. You're talking about the people floating here. Yeah. 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 <laughs> There's like a new um, segue type of thing, I, and I saw it at the airport this summer, where you just, there's not like the handlebars thing, and we are walking by, and that's the first thing that popped in my head, was the Wally people floating around. I'm like, we are going to turn into those people, because we don't even walk anymore. Right, right, and we don't even think about what's what's going into our, you know, we just we just assume that it's okay, that whoever's, you know, putting it out there, that it's it's good for us. So we'll come back tomorrow and we'll actually play with this data.